The motivating scripture of my life goes like this. Observe the lilies of the field, how they neither spin nor sow. But Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed as one of these. Observe the ravens of the air, how they neither plant nor store in barns, yet God feeds them. If God feeds the birds of the air and clothes the grass of the field, won't he care for you? When I was in college, I pledged that if I ever obtained wealth, I wouldn't lose sight of the fact that it had come as a result of God's blessing and belonged to him. I didn't want to wait to have money before I started giving. The scripture I just quoted provided the answer. If it was true that God would care for me, there was no fear that giving to the church and its mission was not in my power. You're all familiar with the parable of the mustard seed. Jesus said that if you have faith no greater than the size of a mustard seed, you could move mountains. Surely, if faith could move mountains, I thought, faith could provide the means for me to support the church. God has put me to the test several times in regard to these principles. I have time to share one experience. My wife Cindy and I have committed ourselves to revitalizing our hometown, Independence, Missouri. The largest reason for this commitment has been its relationship to our church's headquarters. I'm a trial lawyer. A few years ago, I was trying a case that had no chance of settling. I also had a major financial responsibility related to our commitment to revitalize independence that was coming due in 30 days. As I prepared to try the case, I began to worry about my impending obligation. As I fretted, as if an audible voice was spoken, I heard, don't worry about it. The trial began and a few weeks later, I again was in preparation and again started worrying about my financial obligation, now just three weeks away. Again the words came, don't worry about it. The trial continued and I continued to do better and better. The night before closing argument, to my surprise, the defendant's lawyer called. They wanted to settle. I said no and kept saying no until the amount of the offer was sufficient to fully compensate my client, which coincidentally meant I could meet my own need. Then I said, and you have to pay it in two weeks. The defendant agreed. There's a quote from George Bernard Shaw that I'm very fond of. This is the true joy in life, the being used for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one. The being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish little clod of ailments and grievances complaining that the world will not devote itself to making me happy. I am of the opinion that my life belongs to the whole community, and as long as I live, it is my privilege to do for it whatever I can. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die, for the harder I work, the more I live. I rejoice in life for its own sake. Life is no brief candle to me. It's sort of a splendid torch, which I've got to hold up for a moment, and I want to make it burn as brightly as possible before handing it on to future generations. My testimony is that God will care for you if you will first care for the kingdom, and if you will exercise your faith, God will bless you and through you the church.